Hi, it's John and welcome once again to Jam Life Tech Talk. Today, we're putting the Sony ZV-1 up against the A7C. Should bloggers upgrade to full frame? Let's take a Jam Life Tech adventure. So before we get into it, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We would really appreciate your support. Smash that bell for more great tech videos as they drop. And if the video helps you out, please give us a thumbs up. With that out the way, let's get into it. I have owned the ZV-1 now for around eight months and the A7C for around four and have used both extensively. In fact, I'm shooting on the A7C right now and that's why it's not right here in front of me. So I have a few thoughts I want to share with you. The natural progression for most vloggers over the past few years was to move from point and shoot to APS-C cameras with their larger sensors and more versatility with interchangeable lenses while still being compact enough for vloggers. When the ZV-1 camera came out last year, it really did give vloggers everything they needed. Well, almost. It was such a good specialized camera for vlogging that many are quite happy to stay with it now and not upgrade. Now, I really do love this camera, but there are a few things holding it back in my opinion. Then later on last year, we were surprised by the A7C and many people just didn't get it. Well, as soon as I saw it, I got it straight away, and it's why I sold my A7 III and my A6600 and bought it. But firstly, I'm going to show you some comparisons between the two, and then come back and talk about the reasons you may want to stay with the ZV-1 or upgrade to the A7C. And these reasons may really surprise you as they are not the typical reasons you may think. Just as a side note, with the A7C, I'm shooting with the 24 to 70 G Master lens to have the same focal length on both cameras. And that's for most of the comparisons, except on the low light and bokeh test where I'm using the G Master 24 mm 1.4 prime, just so I can have use of the low light extreme of that lens. I know this is not fair on the poor ZV-1, but changing lenses is an advantage of the A7C and should be highlighted. Okay, this is an in-camera microphone test for the Sony A7C. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. This is an in-camera mic test from the front of the camera for the Sony A7C. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. This is an in-camera mic test from behind the camera for the Sony ZV-1. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. This is an in-camera mic test from the front of the camera for the Sony ZV-1. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Here's the A7C with the B1N mic installed from behind. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. So after those mic checks, let's go with the Sony ZV-1 zoom test, 24 to 70, and we're also adding the 1.5 of the clear image zoom here. And now same with the A7C, 24 to 70, but we're not adding that clear image zoom. What you can do with the Sony full frame range is add the APS-C crop, and that's what this is here. So here's some stabilization tests. This is in-body stabilization on both, and it's the handheld tripod test. Just bear in mind that we've got active stabilization on the Sony ZV-1 and normal stabilization on the A7C. And here's the slow pan test with in-body stabilization. You can see once again, the Sony ZV-1's handling it a bit better with active stabilization, but it does crop in a little bit more. And now we're walking with in-body stabilization. 
I don't think that either camera does a good enough job with their in-body stabilization. And here we are with the vlog test. And once again, I don't think either of the cameras has enough in-body stabilization to do a usable job. Okay, and now here's what's awesome about both of these cameras. You can use Sony's free app, Catalyst Browse, to get a great result with stabilization, seen here when I'm walking using that app. Here's a slow motion test on both cameras. Both have to use 1080 here. And I can't see much difference in either of the cameras, but still a great result. And here's the time lapse or what Sony calls interval shoot on both cameras. Awesome that you can do this inside the camera. Okay, here's a blurred background bokeh test on the Sony ZV-1. Pretty nice result. Okay, same test on the A7C. Wow, this is just insane depth of field. And here's some side-by-sides just so you can see the difference. Here's a low light test on both cameras. You can see here that the Sony A7C is a clear winner and also has lower noise as we go through the ISO range. So very interesting comparisons, but I don't think the quality of what's coming out of each of the cameras is the real reason to upgrade. Yes, the A7C will get better low light performance and better bokeh, etc., etc. But it's not the real reason, I believe, to choose one or the other of these cameras for a vlogger. So let me explain. You see, vloggers are uploading to YouTube and other social media platforms and most are watching that on a small screen like a tablet or phone or even at full HD on a laptop and will never really be worried about the quality upgrade. They just won't see it on those platforms. What I mean by that is the quality coming from the ZV-1 is more than sufficient for vlogging. I hope you agree. So you may ask, why did I understand the Sony A7C and for that matter, the ZV-1 when they came out? It was because quite simply, being vloggers, Sony aimed these products clearly at us. They have given vloggers new choices and removed APS-C out of the equation. So why are these cameras for vloggers? Well, they give us pretty much all of what we need. They have the flip out screen, awesome autofocus on both. Both have a way of mounting and using an external mic. Awesome stabilization can now be achieved by their free app Catalyst Browse and many more features directed at vloggers. All in a compact form, which when you carry a camera around all day vlogging is really important. I have to say to have a full frame camera in a size such as the A7C, awesome. Okay, so let's get back to and concentrate on why we made this video. Firstly, why would you stay with the ZV-1? And almost automatically, you have to say the price at around 750 US dollars with no need to buy a lens as extra, it's a lot cheaper than the A7C. Secondly, it's more compact and is truly pocketable. It's small and light enough to take with you everywhere. Thirdly, the inbuilt ND filter, which is really quite handy. 
you can shoot in sunny situations without having to raise up your aperture too much. And that means you can achieve better blurred backgrounds. But to be honest here, you can screw a variable ND onto the front of any Sony E-mount lens and get a better result. It just doesn't come with a camera or lens. You have to buy it as an extra. And lastly, if IBIS or in-body stabilization is what you crave, then the ZV-1 has the better of the two. With active stabilization, which I find really bizarre that they did not include it on the A7C. But oh well, there you go. Okay, so here are my reasons why you would upgrade to the A7C. Well, firstly, and I think most importantly, is battery life. The battery life on the A7C shooting in 4K can sometimes get me around two hours of constant shooting, whereas the ZV-1 struggles to get me 30 minutes. And as you may well realize, if you're out all day shooting, that can give you a headache with the ZV-1. Well, it does me anyway. There is a few solutions for this. See my video up above somewhere, but these really are just band-aids. And if I'm honest, do not stop you from having to bring quite a few batteries out with the ZV-1 compared to one or maybe two for the A7C. Secondly is versatility. By that I mean you can change lenses. And the Sony full frame range is really getting quite comprehensive. And if weight's your issue, you can use an APS-C lens with the Sony A7C and crop in. And this makes a huge difference, especially if you wanna be a little bit wider than the 24 millimeter for vlogging and want to reach a little further than the 70 millimeter on the zoom. And lastly, it's the no record limit and overheating. I found the A7C will record all day long, which was one of the reasons I sold my A7 III, which had a 30 minute cap, which I never really understood. And with overheating on the A7C, I have never experienced it, but it's a real problem with the ZV-1 even with the overheat setting on high. But I guess that's what you get in a smaller body camera. So to sum it up, should vloggers upgrade to a full frame? Well, at least in Sony's case, it really depends on the vlogger. If you want a small, compact, take anywhere solution, you don't have to shoot continuously for long periods and you are price driven, then the ZV-1 is for you. But if you want to shoot for longer periods, have more versatility, and price isn't an object, then the Sony A7C is the go for you. For me now, the A7C is the one we shoot most on, but the ZV-1 is still a useful, compact, take anywhere camera that I still do love. If you really wanna know, it's the battery life and 24 millimeter just not being quite wide enough that has had me picking up the A7C more often. And just before we go, I wanted to announce the winner of the GoPro Snap Mounts competition. So many great comments, so I just took one at random in the end. And the winner is Kenneth Clockholm. We'll be contacting you very soon, Kenneth, so we can send out your snap mounts. That's it for this video, but please let us know what you think of the Sony ZV-1 and A7C. And please ask us any questions you like. We always love to hear from you. And please don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you on the next Jam Life Tech Adventure.